All right, we're going to look real quick at the Smithsonian's K-12 Teachers Resources. We go to Explore Teacher Guides, and when we scroll down, we'll see topics that are geared towards content areas, and they have a PDF for each one of these, and when we look at them in particular, if we click on one, um, we'll see a main question here at the top. We'll see the grade level that it focuses on and then a link in to other subject areas. There's the um, standards that students would be looking at. Then when we click on the PDF, it will show us the actual guide itself. Some of these are longer. They're teaching resources, so we see um, visuals that go with it, lots of introduction, questions to ask students as they look at specific artworks. Sometimes the PDF is shorter articles that they could actually read. And this one is a lot of text and then looking questions that teachers could use. I went to a separate one um, up here towards the top which was Envisioning Manifest Destiny. This one is a little bit different. Um, when we look at that one, we see that it is talking about the specific artwork, gives you the standards and resources that you're going to need, specific images. Um, this is laid out more like a lesson plan than a book. Um, it gives you historical context shows you an image of the artwork that you're discussing, gives the students worksheets to pull from. So they're all laid out a little bit differently um, depending on which subject area you go to. And let me hop back in there. We see content links. Um, these are actually less textually based and more videos and um, interactive games that the kids can play on. So like bottle caps to brushes and we click on that. What can young viewers learn about American art and artists through online tutorials? And so these are little online tutorials. However, I think it would be more specific for upper level because when you click into most of them you're going to see longer paragraphs. These wouldn't be for little kids. Um, so we see that. It's got lots of things there, little activities that they can do as they work their way through here in the kids corner. And you have to back all the way out of it, which is kind of clunky. And um, when we look at all these, they just have, they're not spelled out as to what grade level they are, um, which was a little bit difficult. This is a timeline. Um, that's interactive so that they can work with different time periods, looking at artwork from different time periods. So each one has different activities and it, it's difficult because they're all so very different to know which one would actually work in the classroom. You kind of have to dig into them just a little bit to see. I think the part that I was most interested in um, is right in here. And there's also a link up at the top for it. But when you go to videos, I think I could have my high school students watch some of these and then write about them. Um, there's artist lectures. There's roundtable discussions, art and identity between cultures, interviews with specific artists, which I thought would be really engaging. Most of them are only about two and a half to three minutes long, which isn't too bad. Um, some of them look a little bit drier <laughs> but then this one was about the temple which was just fascinating to see how he works and how he builds the actual pieces um, and it, a lot of it has to do with their current shows they're all in YouTube this one's about six minutes long and it shows the artists and it shows um, how they add the pennies to the pieces and how they build the pieces up and how they're interactive. Out there in the desert, you're supposed to be interacting with the pieces. Um, so it was just interesting to see them and see how they work together. Lots of different topics here. So I thought the videos were almost more engaging. My kids could use their phones to watch the videos and then maybe write a review about it. Um, that's up here.
under art and artist under museum videos um, under education you can get to it through k-12 teachers and I thought my students could use those um, the other pieces are almost more geared towards just teachers instead of things that the students themselves could access which a lot of times with my high school kids that's what I want I want my kids to be able to get to things themselves and then write reviews or um, understand how things work media for the masses posters is art um, and then a lot of them you have to click into and they're done I don't know, they're just done textually dense. I, it was the phrase that kept coming to mind, like how would my students read through this and understand how to navigate it. I don't have laptops, so I don't know how easy it would be to work with it. Some of them are pretty cool, but I think you would have to do a lot of sorting to figure out which ones would actually fit in with what you wanted to do. Um, so that's my review of the Smithsonian American Art Museum, and I hope you can find some things that you would, would be able to use.